This is Gus Summers, and you're watching In Show Celebrities. This is the time I take every Monday to talk about some of my favorite films and actors. This week, we have another icon, legend of Hollywood. She has starred with some of the greatest actors and has been in some of the greatest films that Hollywood has produced, and she comes from a Hollywood dynasty. Her father was an iconic actor. Her brother, an iconic actor. And she established herself early as an actress who would show longevity and greatness in her work. Of course, I'm talking about Lady Jane Seymour Fonda, more commonly known as Jane Fonda. She started off in the 60s, you know, already doing some great films and starring with you know some great actors and right away you could see that her talent just would propel her into not only superstar status but also becoming a sex symbol well first up it's the movie that did just that this movie just took her worldwide as not only being a wonderful actress but also showing that she can do great work in any type of film. And of course, as I mentioned, made her known to the world as a sex symbol. The film, Barbarella. It's a, it's a science fiction film. She is uh, dispatched from Earth to go to a, a nearby uh, galaxy uh, to look for a, uh, and rescue a professor, uh, Duran Duran. And why they want him back on Earth is that he developed a weapon. And there, the Earthlings are afraid that uh, if you know, the enemies uh, get the weapon or if it falls into wrong hands, uh, you know, it would be devastating to Earth. So you know, she goes out in search uh, for the, uh, the professor. Well, so she ends up going to this planet. She crash lands. She's found by these children. And these children take her in. And she plays the... The, uh, the character, you know, is being somewhat innocent, naive. You know, things just happen to her. And suddenly she thinks the children are nice, and then suddenly she gets tied up, and then there are these, they send in these, these flesh-eating dolls. And so now, you know, she's stuck, you know, in this dilemma. And, you know, and you have these flesh-eating dolls. You see these dolls with these little sharp teeth. <laughs> it's like, wow, you know, it's really, you know, it's really far out there. Anyway, so, you know, she's saved. You know, by a uh, by a hero, um, he's like a, 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 a um, Mark Mark Hand, if or a Captain Hand, something like that, if I remember. You know, she uh, she's she's saved, um, and in form of payment, um, he's wanting to engage in intercourse, and she's telling him, "Well, on Earth, we no longer do this. We take a pill. We put our hands together." Well, he says, "Well, I want to experience sex in the." old-fashioned way humans touching so um, she agrees and it happens and you know of course like I said it's the 60s everyone's becoming liberated and you know she she says something like you know boy you know I, I do enjoy the old-fashioned way of human contact or <laughs> something like that so uh, he helps her you know she she continues on her journey she now gets uh, gets stuck in this. Uh, she, I think she bur if I remember correctly, she burrows through the earth, uh, ends up in this labyrinth that's like a, a prison. Well, while there, you know, again she gets uh, she gets knocked out, she gets captured, uh, she's saved now by a. I guess he's an angel. I guess this is what he is. Because he's a flying man who's blind, he can't see. You know, there there are different things that, that go along. Because the story is is that you know she helps people you know, in, in a, a sexually explicit way. And by doing that, she liberates them because they end up, uh, you know, consummating. And now what happens with him is that he didn't have the ability to fly anymore. And now suddenly, though, even though he's blind, he can, he has the will to fly, you know, because of Barbarella. And so, you know, that's, you know, as you follow the story, you know, again, it's a bit campy, but, you know, it, it's interesting that, Again, how sex can be used in, in a manner that you know liberates a person, opens his mind, or you know opens him up to you know grander things. But anyway, so she continues on her journey, 
of trying to find, uh, you know, Professor Durand Duran. He's helped by this, uh, you know, along the way, uh, be, uh, who's helped by a concierge. Uh, he's known as a concierge. Uh, he played. He's played by a uh, Milo O'Shea. Uh, Milo O'Shea is a. He's one of those wonderful actors. He always, you know, he has big eyes. He has. He has this nice manner to him. He's kind of um, always a little, you know, chubby. And so, a guy that you would take into your confidence and believe. Well, you know, he's the one that told him about. Uh, you know the. Um, uh, the angel uh, Pygar. Pygar, remember his name was, if I remember his name, and you know he's the one that told him this is his problem, and he's the one that kind of guides her through all this, and then she finds that she's on a planet, uh, in a place where like women are in charge and men are used to, they exploit men there, and you know there's a there's a person who's in charge called the the, the great tyrant, you know, and it's uh, portrayed by Anita Pallenberg, and. You know, as she's fighting her, looking for uh, Dr. Duran Duran, and, you know, the, she has these deep people uh, coming uh, to aid her. And suddenly, you know, I don't want to give uh, any away, anything away, but, you know, things aren't as they should be. So, so you have Jane Fonda in, the, in this futuristic, exploitative film uh, exploring... You know, human relations while looking for a mad, a, a scientist in a foreign planet. So, you know, it's wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, science, fiction, science fiction camp of the 60s, you know, done to a great level. So anyone who's seen it will, will know what I'm talking about. And those who will see it, you know, will, will, will enjoy it. Um, so anyways, like I said, that, that film really propelled her in, into the world as a sex symbol. But I'm going to bring you forward now. You know, one thing that we know about Jane Fonda is that she is uh, a wonderful actress that takes on, you know, deep roles that she's not, af you know, uh, uh, afraid to not take on something that's, you know, worth uh, talking about. And that's what she did in this next film, uh, a great film called The China Syndrome. It stars her, Jane Fonda, as a Kimberly Wells. She's a news reporter. And her and her cameraman, portrayed by another great actor, Michael Douglas. They are in a uh, power plant, nuclear power plant. They're video recording, you know, just doing, uh, you're doing a news report. While there, uh, they experience a, an emergency shutdown. And one particular gentleman notices something's wrong. Something's not working as it should. And great, great actor who, who, uh, who stars along with them too, the legendary Jack Lemmon. He plays uh, Jack Goodell. Uh, he, he's one of the uh, plant employees that during the shutdown, there were some tremors and shaking in what appeared to be a minor meltdown. Well, they get, they get the, the reactor online and they're saying everything's okay. Well, what ended up happening was, uh, well, Gene Fonda and Michael Douglas were there. They were filming. They told him to stop, but Michael Douglas kept filming because he knew something was going on. Well, they end up leaving and showing the footage to uh, an expert. And the expert told them, well, what, what was happening was a, a meltdown. Literally, a, a, what we call a China syndrome. And what that means is, is that the reactor gets so hot, it will literally melt through the floor into the earth and through the earth and supposedly all the way to China, but really it will go, uh, you know, go through the work through the earth and contaminate the ground, water, you know, uh, underground water, and so er everything in the surrounding area will end up being uh, radioactive. And so, you know, they have that story going on. Jane Fonda wants to run it. Uh, she shut down from her from her bosses. No, we're not going to run that story. Well, on Jack Lemmon on his side is trying to convince everybody, he goes, look, something's going on. And as he was doing an inspection, he, he saw that uh, he found some uh, radioactive uh, material and realized that the reactor wasn't uh, up to par. So he's trying to tell everyone, they want to bring it up line full power. And he said, no, we'll have another meltdown. We'll have a real meltdown if you bring it to full power. And again, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, he's up at the power plant 
inadvertently taking over the power plant because just of, uh, of you know the, the situation of things and so he ultimately says you know I only want to talk to uh, uh, Kim uh, Kim Wells which is Jane Fonda so Jane Fonda and Michael Douglas go down there to do a live interview at the reactor because he wants to explain everything and tell them how uh, you know, the the reactor isn't working properly and if it's brought up to full power it will cause a meltdown and so you know from there it's you know the ensuing drama of you know Jack Lemon being inside the the uh, the control the control area of the nuclear reactor and I do have to say you know the thing about Jack Lemon uh, is that it, he's by himself just talking again wonderful presence of Jack Lemon that he's able to hold the the camera the scene by himself as he's explaining all this and again fantastic acting because you have Jane Fonda there you know talking with him and explaining you know they were having this this dialogue back and forth you have Michael Douglas there they worked wonderful together and then just you know the film itself was uh, like, like I always say in many films it's not only relevant for the time but it's also relevant today because you know during the 70s we had a power crisis and they were looking for alternative uh, power source and nuclear was a big was a big debate and if you follow the story to today many are many of the nuclear reactors are needing to either go offline um, for massive reconstruction or completely be shut down and new ones be built because they only have a life expectancy of so many decades and um, the majority of them or most of them I'm already reaching that life expectancy so you know knowing that information now and then watching this film uh, dealing with this very thing you can see wow how it's relevant uh, today so great film great film now one more film one more film it's 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 I love the fact that Jane Fonda can literally do anything. She can, you know, be a serious actress, like she, like she, uh, as she's shown many times. Um, she can do it like Barbarella, you know, Space Campy. She can do this. Uh, it's not quite comedy, but it's a it, this light type of movie. What well, she can also do comedy. She has great comedic uh, timing, and this movie proved it. One of my favorites nine to five <laughs> you know, she plays judy a, a, a divorced uh returning to work um lady who finds herself in the mix of a large company and she gets hired uh to learn learn how you know this particular division of this company works well she's being trained by violet uh, again another another a great actress who's a, who has great comedic uh, timing because she is literally a comedian miss lily tomlin uh, she has to show judy the ropes and you know teach her how to, how to be part of the company and one of the things that she tells her is that she warns her about the boss mr hart he says you know he's he's treacherous he is he's a liar he's a cheater goes on along the list she says and and Jean Fonda says, oh he's such a nice man and he goes no he's he's terrible and well, there are a couple of people that you have to look out for and one of them is his own secretary and everyone in the in the in the office knows that they're having an affair because look at her and who's her secretary we all know Miss Dolly Parton. <laughs> again, she does great. You know, Dolly Parton is one of those actresses that just, you know, again, natural what she does. You know, she she doesn't, she's not one of those singers that sings in her movies because that's the only thing she can do. No, she acts. You know, and it, and her timing, her her presence, she looks great on the screen. She she has great comedic timing, and you know. It, the trio worked perfectly and as the story progresses they realize that Mr. Hart portrayed wonderfully by another great actor um, Tabney Coleman uh, has been lying to the whole office the whole time uh, about uh, his secretary uh, her name is um, uh, Dora Lee, Dora Lee uh, Dolly Parton that they never had an affair she's happily married and she's always wondered why no one likes her you know she's not well you know it's 
you know, like most women, you know, she's she's very voluptuous. She's you know, she's a very beautiful woman. And as women go, you know, when you see someone like Dolly Parton, you know, jealousy enters. But she learns she learns later that they didn't like her because they thought she has her position in the perks that she got because she was sleeping with Dabney Coleman. And then because of all the little situations, um, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda realize you know, the truth comes out is that they never had an affair. He's been lying the whole time just to, you know, uh, boost up his male ego. Well, they're, well, what ends up happening is they find out that he is, he has been embezzling money. And so they try to, uh, they're going to, uh, confront him with it, but what ends up happening is uh, Dorleen, Dolly Parton, gets so angry with him, and you know he's always, you know, bring me coffee, bring me this, bring that, and she goes to take him coffee, and instead of putting cream in there, <laughs> you know, they have a box of rat poison, you know, in the shop. She grabs a rat poison and puts it in there, you know, without thinking about it, and takes it in there, you know, and here's your coffee, and she goes back realizing you know she goes back to to the to the area where the coffee's and she realized she put rat poison there you know she goes back and she and she finds him sprout out on the floor but what she didn't see before was his chair it, it, his tricky chair always falls back and so he went to go drink his coffee but his chair fell back he spilled the coffee hit his head and knocked himself out so they think so by this time her and uh, violet and um and uh, Judy are our friends. And so she's telling him, I think I killed him. I did this. I did that. Well, we, I got to take him to the hospital. We take him to the hospital. They over here. The doctor's saying, well, he died. But it wasn't Daphne Coleman. It was another patient. So they grab the body. <laughs> they're in the trunk. They're driving with the dead body. And then they realize they grabbed the wrong body. And then they go back and realize that he's not dead. And so, and, you know, it's, and now they are, what ends up happening is that they need to, uh, keep them confined because they're waiting for some uh, some paperwork to prove that he's been embezzling. And so for for a couple weeks they have to keep him tied up somewhere. And I don't want to I don't want to give too much away, but you know the the, the movie is great. Um, you know the, the working of the, of of Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Dolly Parton. I, you know, I can't it, it'd be hard pressed to think of you know where you have a film with such strong women putting on such different performances and it all working well again it's great but there, I do I do want to talk about one scene uh, you know nowadays we're talking about um, you know legalizing uh, marijuana and, and what have you and and how rebellious it is well back in this film in the 19 or early 80s I think it's 1980 81 when they made this film they already had a scene a marijuana scene where they're getting <laughs> getting high and they're drinking and look at that there's Jane Fonda way back then again you know I'm not even in front of the curve she was already part of it uh, part of this trend before it uh, before the curve even started so you know uh, you know great film I know you enjoy it you know I, I, I still watch uh, all these today especially in 9 to 5 it's, it's a great comedy you know it's just wonderful to see good movies that you know that with great performances uh that 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 endure and uh, you know last and uh you know just uh, the movies today you know barbarella you know of course you know synonymous with uh with jane fonda uh china syndrome great film still relevant today and nine to five you know funny funny as uh well i'll say it one more time funny you'll you'll enjoy it but you know what, what's great is that she's still acting today you know she just recently did a film with uh, lily tomlin so that was great um she does always does you know great films and like i said these are only just a few of the films of her great great career that she started since i think in the early 60s so wonderful wonderful actress great films i know you'll enjoy them well that's what we have for you this week, and this is Gus Summers, and you've been watching In Show Celebrities, and this is the time I take every Monday to talk about some of my favorite films and actors, and of course, uh, remember, don't forget to tune in 
every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. at theinshow.com, where I host The In Show. And that's where I, you know, bring on celebrities and uh, all sorts of guests to talk about their, their projects or whatever it is that they want to talk about. Of course, look for us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, uh, Flickr, Instagram, all those great social media sites. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, Gus has left the building.